onion bhaji and potato rosti. Not a great deal of skill involved. I think it's an easy starter, but I don't care because it's so delicious. For the rosties, Charles mixes garam masala with spuds, onions and peas. The mix is then rolled in flour. Oh. <laughs> flour, what does it do? It makes a mess. The cakes are fried and they'll be warmed before serving. Now for those onion bhajis. Hopefully it's homemade, because it's very easy, so if it's not homemade, then... Hmm. Relax, Tom, of course they're homemade. Hello. Hello, my lovely Asian onion bhajis. Yeah, Just you. not by Charles. <laughs> Great, well, I've got these onion bhajis here. Um, the local pub got them for me last minute, so hope these go down well. Let's hope they like pub grub. In the kitchen, Charles has warmed the starter, ready to plate up. Well, I've been given such short notice, I really hope they are forgiving about the fact that I have got some of the stuff bought in from shops. Here it is, homemade potato rosti and a bhaji from the pub. Oh, that looks nice. Just for you. I didn't make the onion bhaji. Oh. I got one of my friends to drop them off for me. Well done for being honest. Yeah, that's fair, that's good. Um, unfortunately, I did find the rosti just to be mashed potato, um, bland and a bit boring. The food's absolutely scrumptious. I particularly enjoyed the onion bhaji, but that was probably because it was a takeaway onion bhaji. What actually did you cook yourself for the starter? I cooked myself the rosti <laughs> and I cut the onions. What he did make, I wasn't impressed with. Everybody else is... I mean, I slaved for... Minutes? Hours and hours and hours. I would have rather it was just all your own work, I and mean, I kind of would have appreciated that slightly more. Mm. Well, I don't really... I, do, I mean, to be honest, I don't really care. I just wanted something... Uh, for me, it's what I wanted to eat for a starter. I wanted a rosti, I wanted an onion bhaji. Whether you guys like it or not, I wasn't really bothered. I thought, I'm going to make myself a load of food that I want to eat and I want to enjoy. And if you like it, great, give me good points. If you don't like it, I don't really care if this is the food I eat. Really, he should care about what we think because we're coming to his dinner party and we're eating his food. And I got criticised and you and just got to, take the, you got to take it on the head. I just... Do you know what? I'm going to say it again. I just don't care anymore. They're all in for the kill. It's just a bit frustrating. I was like, why? What have I done to deserve this pain? I've been what, slaving away all day to just get abuse. It's just horrible. I will confess, the pastry is shop-bought. But I did kind of modify it by putting the cheddar and the chive crust on. So you, yeah. you sliced some cheddar? I'm... I'm Grated, darling. Grated, sliced. I'm really annoyed that you bought your pastry because oh, yeah. you can make pastry. And I was so slated about it. Bloody onion bargy. You can make onion bargy, um, Charles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know I can. <laughs> and I was slated for it. So I'm going to slate you about your pastry and you have to accept it because... I do accept what you're saying about yeah. pastry and that is completely, completely fair enough. OK. He went completely over the top. And I thought, just shut your mouth up. You're ruining Tom's night. Be quiet. It's been done. It's been said. So leave it there and get on I'm with it. I'm cheating now. With the rice? Why not? You cheated with the sauce earlier. These pita breads, I've made them, but I don't know. They actually smell like pancakes. Oh, Tina, what's this? I have actually got some flatbreads in, just in the case that something went wrong. Plan B. With her third shortcut complete, it's ready. Curry from a jar, microwaved rice, and a shop-bought flatbread. This could be interesting. So, Tina, tell me how you made this. Um... Come clean, Tina. The sauce I did actually have out of a jar again purely because of... And I know that I shouldn't be using it for... I keep saying about my leg, but obviously being on your leg for that length of time. And so it's just that literal <clears throat> little bit of sauce that mm. I just popped in, but everything else was just all homemade. Reckon you got away with that one? Oh, I can make it. My foot again. My bad foot again. I can understand that Tina having problems with her ankle gives her some limitations, but I don't think that stops you standing there and making your own red Thai curry paste. And a jasmine rice? Jasmine rice? Repeating it. Great trick. <laughs> How is it jasmine rice as opposed <laughs> to just rice? <laughs> Enlighten me. Enlighten you? Obviously, there's fragrance and a little bit of different taste. I don't know if you... Just a little mm. bit of a pungent taste. So you've added something to it? No. So it's just... It's just, yeah, it's jasmine, jasmine rice. Okay. Barely got away with the bread. So what about the the bread, Tina? Did you make the flatbreads? Oh, 
from scratch today made my own flatbreads. Did you? However, I just felt they were not up to scratch to serve oh, you. Yeah. And I'd rather serve you something that was edible. I'm sure they'll understand. I'd have liked her to have brought out the other flatbreads and gone, there you go, try those guys. I wouldn't have liked to serve you those, but give them a try. If it all goes Pete Tong and she's had to like use some packet ones, well, fair play to it. I know Tina's not been to Thailand and I don't expect that of everybody, even though I've travelled quite extensively. Ooh. But to have some of the ingredients in that curry, like slices of courgette and sugar snap peas, to me, just it just didn't work at all. Hopefully the main will be all right. If people don't like it, they don't like it. At least I've tried. That's all I can say. To make it poppins, I'm putting a party pop bar on everybody's plate. <gasps> that was a good one. Let's just hope it goes with a bang. Chicken pie with shop-bought sauce and shop-bought pastry and a shop-bought brolly. Two shop-bought poppers. Three. Yay! Woo! Oh, Yay! lovely. Fantastic. Did you make the pastry? Ooh. Well, that is a really good question because um, oh. I didn't make it myself. Oh. I rolled it just like you did. <gasps> Which is tricky. She asked me about my pastry last night. It was a tit for tat. I was gobsmacked that she didn't make the pastry, considering she went straight in for Karen last night about the pastry. She was writing checks that her, you know, her pastry couldn't cash. Did you yeah. make the sauce yourself and everything? Yeah. Oh. Never mind, Mary Poppins, you should play Pinocchio. The peppercorn sauce is my favourite part, Deb. Absolutely delicious. Just the right amount of spicy and creamy. Yes. How did you make it? Cream, <laughs> Dijon mustard, and a little bit of olive oil. Mm. Mm. Delicious. And if you believe that, you'll believe anything. I said I'd made the peppercorn sauce from scratch. And I hadn't. I hate myself right now. If Cher was in my shoes, she would probably turn back time. Cher would have made her own sauce. Philippa heats the curry and rice. Next, the accompaniments. Not homemade at all. I brought them. Gone all out, eh? Once heated, it's ready. Chicken curry with rice. Quietly confident about this dish. Wow. That looks awesome. Pecoras, you make those as well. <laughs> no. It's all right. No. <laughs> I didn't make the pecoras. I'm not going to lie. I didn't okay. make them. Right. Philippa's got that buzz, but how's the food? The rice was bland. I don't know if there's any salt in there or any butter. It was more a chicken and a tomato sauce with a little bit of chilli rather than an actual curry. Back at the table, the two salesmen are finding more common ground. I love music. I love live music. I love... I love all sorts of music, do you know what I mean? Oh, well, I used to sing and stuff, so I really do like the music. So my indulgence ah, is I do so still, every now and sing. again, I will sit in an empty room and just start singing. Really? Yeah. OK. If you were to sing something, what's, what's your passion of singing? 1970s kind of Marvin Gaye type stuff. You're going to drop us a note then, Curtis? <sighs> do I have Come to? On, yes. Do I have to? Yeah. Oh, does he really have to? Sitting in the morning sun Thought, oh gosh, here we go, another like kind of wannabe. And I was actually really surprised. He's like, wow, like you can sing. He only can. Watching the tide roll away. And that's your last yeah. <laughs> So now I'm going to make the bit to go with the chicken, the sauce. Oh, hello. Salsa from the supermarket, which Adam is mixing with large dollops of sour cream, again from the shops. Normally I'd measure stuff when I know what I'm cooking. Uh, this one I'm shooting from the hip a little bit, so ah! it's going to be hit or miss. He adds even more creaminess with some soft cheese before mixing. Look at those colours. Pretty beige. But how does it taste? Whoa. It's actually pretty good, man. The supermarket will be glad to hear it. I mean, obviously, if he makes the guacamole and salsa, he's obviously got to get the balance right. Some people don't add enough salt. Some people don't add enough, like, garlic. And some people leave it to others. The, the guac is um, shop-bought. I wanted to ask if the guacamole was homemade. No! Oh! I wanted to focus my time on the main dish. Mm. And that did mean that the side dish, yeah. which is the guac, took a bit of a hit on it. The guac shop-bought. I think the guacamole, it would have been nice for it to have been homemade, because it's not that difficult. I would have made my own guacamole if I'm, to be fair, <laughs> I, I would have done. Yeah. If you're serving, it's obviously one of your main parts of your starter, really, it should be homemade. 
disappointed. You know, it is what it is. You know, I didn't make the guacamole, so deal with it. That's the spirit. <laughs>